tall, gangly thing? This weekend, the first ever Teamfight Tactics Summit will take place in Covina, California, where 24 players, influencers, and these guys will be competing for their share of $25,000. This event features a brand new duos format, very similar to what we've seen before, where the players will compete in nine games over three days in the same lobby as their duo partner. That means that this tournament will be a great testament to see who has the best synergy and who will end up griefing each other. If you've never watched a Summit event before, you are in for a treat. Obviously, there's the high-level gameplay, but on top of that, there are side events ranging from cooking shows to talent shows to Mafia. It is a great event that showcases a wide range of both talent and entertainment. So let's take a look at the 12 duo teams competing at the TFT Summit. Because there were some sickness and dropouts, we don't have the full teams for everyone yet, but I'll cover everybody that I possibly can. The star-crossed lovers of TFT have put their legal battles to rest to team up at the TFT Summit. Milk had a relatively quiet set 7 compared to his runs of previous sets, but still put up numbers that solidify him as one of the best players in North America. With a 4.12 AVP, Milk ranked 20th among players with at least 30 games in tournament. Bebe is one of the most iconic streamers in TFT, hailing from Korea. Known for his hyper-aggressive leveling curves and focus on tempo, Bebe takes flex play to the extremes. And not only is he one of the best players on the Korean ladder, he's a strong tournament threat that positions this duo as one of the teams with a real shot at taking home the gold. The old school duo brings a strong competitive contrast to the mix. Robin, the most consistent competitive player in North American TFT history, and Kiyun, the volatile tournament performer with peaks that very few can compete with. In set 7, Robin did what he always does. He made final day at every single tournament he entered, continuing his streak as the only North American to have made final day at every single regional finals. On the other hand, Kiyun has taken a step back from competitive play for the last few sets. He did place a respectable 41st at the Dragon Cup, but we haven't seen Kiyun seriously prepare for tournament play for quite some time. Now, most people in TFT know Hafu and Becca. Hafu was famously rank 1 way back in TFT set 1 beta, while Becca had some impressive tournament runs back in set 1, such as her first place finish at the plus 1 TFT Invitational. With that said, there's definitely a question mark with this team. Becca's coming off of a set where she struggled in tournament and was unable to reach some of the heights that she's seen in previous sets of her career. Hafu is one of the players that represents the influencers of the event, but let's not pretend like Hafu is some pushover. She is one of the strongest strategy game players of our entire generation and was one of the most decorated TFT players in the early set of the game. What can I say about these two? Bryce and Frodan are the iconic TFT commentary duo in North America. Not only that, but they are both previous competitors of the game, with Bryce competing way back in set 3, and then returning with Frodan to compete once again in set 7. While many not expect these two to be of the same caliber as some of the pros stepping into the event, these two players both practice and study regularly with these same pros. Competing may not be their focus, but this team will certainly not be a pushover. Asa and Prestivant represent some of the newcomers to TFT within the last two sets. Asa finished set 7 as my personal rank 1, with strong performances across nearly every event, ladder success to back it up, and the third best average placement among all North Americans. On top of that, he also had the highest top 4 rate among anyone who did not compete in open qualifiers. Prestvent had a bumpy season in set 7, but finished very strong by qualifying for the Western Last Chance Qualifier. While he ultimately came up short, Prestvent has shown signs of greatness in the very short amount of time he's been competing. Summit will be an opportunity for these two players to kick off their season on the right foot. Kuramex and Solis may be the two most underrated TFT players in North America. Kuramex quietly slid into an incredibly strong season in set 7 with a final day appearance in every event. He finished 18th in average placement and boasts more final lobby appearances at regional finals than anyone apart from his own teammate Robin. Solis had some strong performances in set 7 at the Astral Cup in the mid-set finale. A last place finish at the last chance qualifier ended his season on a sour note, but hopefully he learned to not pull an all-nighter going into a tournament. Many people may be familiar with Dog as a former Hearthstone pro, but less familiar with his competitive TFT career. 
Dog was a household name in TFT during the early days of the game and recently made a return to the game in set 7. Though his tournament results were lackluster, the beginning of a set may serve as the equalizer that a player like Dog needs. Raditz had a middle of the pack performance in set 7, positioning himself as a stable player to partner with. Raditz is still looking for his breakout tournament, and Summit could very well be a chance for the young streamer to position himself as a tournament threat. North America's number one ranked player, Rainplosion, teamed up with Pokemon streamer Spicy Appies at number five in set six to bring some excitement to the lineup. Spicy Appies underperformed in set seven compared to his expectations from many, but let's not pretend like he had a bad run. With final day performances at the Astral and Dragon Cup and a legendary comeback in the regional LCQ, showed that Appies can still compete with the best in tournament. Rainplosion, on the other hand, shocked all of North America in her rookie set by winning the Jade Cup placing third at regionals, and then making a seventh place run at the World Championship, the highest placement from any North American player. She was ranked number one in the Don't Talk If You Don't Know Power rankings, and many people are looking to reign to repeat that success in this next set. Summit will be a jumping off point for Appies to make his return to greatness and for Rain to continue her dominance. Like some other players on this list, Aniko is looking to bounce back after a weak set 7. In his defense, Aniko was quite vocal about not enjoying set 7 as much as others and has claimed to be enjoying set 8 much more. If that's the case, we may see the same fired up Aniko that won the Dawnbringer Cup back in set 5. Dish Soap is an interesting case. He dominates ladder and is the only person to contest Satsuko on days spent at rank 1. However, like Satsuko, Dishope has not translated the same style of play into tournament victories. However, that doesn't mean he didn't perform in tournament. In fact, Dishope made final day in three out of the five tournaments he competed in and earned a respectable 11th place finish at regionals to cap out his season. The tri-state duo of Voidsin and Pakigam earned their way into Summit through a campaign largely won by the help of Milk who claimed he needed a travel buddy. Pakigam is a tournament veteran of TFT with creative play that often leads him developing his own lines in the meta. Pocky's future with TFT is quite unknown, and after a poor performance at regionals, having Pocky for at least one more event at Summit is a win for both himself and the viewers. Voidson is a slightly lesser known player to some, but not without his own merits. He came seemingly out of nowhere to win the mid-set finale in set 5, and qualified to regionals in two different sets. He also won New Jersey's Tactician's Crown number 2, hosted by yours truly, and then immediately forgot to sign up for the Jade Cup. So. There's that. Summit is going to be first and foremost a beautiful celebration of the TFT community. The games are going to be hype, the side events are going to crack you up, and if you ever wanted to invite a friend to get into competitive TFT, this is the tournament to show them. Broadcast kicks off Thursday, December 8th at twitch.tv slash beyond the summit. For more TFT esports coverage and content, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.